everyone, I am Dr. Sonal Jain from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. In this series of Forensic Science Lecture, today we are going to discuss about the microscope and various microscopes which are used in Forensic Science for the evidence analysis. Whenever we talk about a microscope, we talk about as it an optical instrument. Microscope consists of various lenses or combination of lenses. The main property or the main tool for which microscope is used is for magnification. While we magnify different evidences under the microscope to see the fine details for those evidences or any other subjects to match with other either the uh, whatever evidence we have found at the crime scene and the evidence which we have with us. One of the most earliest methods for examining physical evidence is microscope. Whenever any evidence which is found at the crime scene, we have to look it under the microscope as the most preliminary examination. The easiest and simplest microscopic device for magnification is a hand magnifier. A hand magnifier is always carried out by various forensic scientists at the crime scene to look for or to magnify any evidence which is not visible to the naked eye or which is not clear to the naked eye. So magnified image which is seen by a hand magnifier is the real image but the magnified image which we view under the microscope is a virtual image. So microscope is a little complex instrument which is made up of combination of different lenses and whenever we put any evidence or any other substance which we have to magnify or we have to look for the fine details of that substance, we put it under the microscope with some uh, source of light and then we can see the fine details of that particular evidence which we have kept under the microscope. So microscope as we say it is the word which is derived from the ancient Greek micros. Micros we know it is small and scoping to look, look or to see. That means microscope says to look the small substances, any instrument which is used to look for the small substances. An instrument used for viewing objects that are too small to be seen by an AD die. For example, if we talk about the uh, microbiology things like different uh, bacteria, viruses, etc., that can be seen under the microscope. Apart from that, if there is any substance, for example, blood or any other cloth piece, but we have to look for the finest details to that substance or that object or that evidence, then also we can use microscope. The first microscope was developed by Anton van Leeuwenhoek, Hoek, but it was made by Hans and Zachary Jensen in the year 1595. It can be used in different fields, whether it is the field of biology, it is the field of chemistry, it is the field of genetics. Most, mostly different microscopes are used for different evidences in the field of forensic sciences. Depending upon what kind of evidence we have to analyze, we look for different microscopes. So we will study about the comparison microscope, stereo microscope, microspectrophotometer, a compound microscope which is also known as a simple microscope and we will see what kind of evidences can be analyzed under these microscopes. So the first stereo microscope was made by Cherubin de Orleans in the year 16 and 71 and followed by Wenham and Grenoff. They have made certain changes in the stereo microscope which was for first made by Cherubin de Orleans. Further, the design uh, was modified by the Cycloptics company with the help of Greenough. They have made a common main objective. Depending upon whenever we receive any evidence from the crime scene, as we have discussed in our previous lectures, that we have to go step by step. The first step is to go for the preliminary examination and then we have to go for the confirmatory examinations. 
So the preliminary examination mostly consisted of various microscopy tests. For example, if there is a red substance which is found at the crime scene, firstly you have to see whether that substance is blood or not. So you have you will conduct some preliminary test to see whether the substance which is found at the crime scene is blood or not. Whether to know the blood belongs to animal or human, which blood group is that, whether DNA can be extracted from that blood or not, those are secondary questions. The first question is the substance, the red color substance found at the crime scene is blood or not. So the first preliminary examination which we will conduct in a forensic science lab is the blood crystal test, Takayama Tickman test. Those tests are seen or are conducted with the help of a microscope. We put some chemicals in the substance which we have collected from the crime scene as an evidence and then we look for if the substance is blood then the Takayama reagent or the Tickman reagent will give us a will give us a specific type of crystals and then we can clearly say that the substance is a blood. Similarly, we have certain tests for semen analysis. Any substance which you have collected from the crime scene which is white in color and you are still uh, you have to make a decision whether this substance is semen or not. The first thing you will do is a microscopy test to look for crystals. So any analysis when we are going through during our investigation of any evidence, the preliminary examination mostly consists of the microscopy test. Whether it is the case of biological evidence examination, physics evidence in a tool marks examination and most importantly the in the cases of when we have the bullet examination or we have question document examination, different microscopes are used for different analysis. So, a microscope has two types of lenses, majorly objective which is the lower lens and first the upper lens is eyepiece. The scientist or the students whenever they use microscope, where we look into the lens from where we will look our eye will be touching to the lens or will be nearer to what lens is known as an eyepiece and the lens which is closer to the specimen which will further magnify the specimen is an objective lens. So we can remember by the lens which is close to eye is eyepiece and the lens which is closer to the object is objective lens. So main motive of a microscope is to give magnification or to magnify any specimen which is kept under the microscope. A simple positive lens or magnifying glass increases the amount of refraction and hence it provides a virtual image of the object that appears larger. A correctly oriented image is gained by placing the object at a distance from the lens lesser than the focal length. So that's how we can have a magnified image of the object which we have placed below the objective lens. So if we talk about the optical, optical instruments, we talk about the power that the image has been modified to 10x, 15x, 20x, 100x, 1000x. So what do we mean by the 20x or 100x? This means that the image which we are viewing through our eye using the eyepiece through the optical instrument is when it is 20x that means this image is 20 times as large as the same image viewed through the human eye at the near point. And if we say the image is 100x, we say the image is 100 times as large as the same image viewed through the human eye at the near point. So that is the linear magnification. The magnification of a lens is usually measured in terms of magnification power which is simply the height of the image divided by the height of the actual object. 
so the magnification power of a particular instrument is defined as the height of image divided by height of object so if the height of image is 100 cm and the height of object is 10 cm then we will say the magnification power is 100 by 10 that is 10x it has magnified the object 10 times of its actual height so that's how we calculate the magnification power of any microscope so that was linear magnification then we have angular magnification it is the angle between the optical axis and the line through the center of the lens to the top of the image which is divided by the angle through the center of the lens to the top of the actual object so how can we define angle mag angular magnification angle of chief rays with lens divided by angle of chief ray without lens so we use these two terms uh, linear magnification as well as angular magnification when we are talking about a microscope power of lens is the reciprocal of the focal lens expressed in meters is known as power of a lens which is mostly defined by d which is 100 by f diopters there is also one more term which is associated with microscope is numerical aperture of an objective which is a measure of its ability to gather light and resolve fine specimen detail at a fixed object distance so whenever we talk about the numerical aperture we have to say one thing is that the magnification is done by the microscope the image height is 10x or 100x or 200x but we have to see how fine the details have been resolved for that we have to look for the numerical aperture of an objective a basic microscope or a simple microscope also known as compound microscope which is mostly used for major biological evidences to analyze has various basic components the first is number one if we see is the eyepiece on the right hand side on the image you can see the ips through which the scientist or the researchers look for the images this ips is also known as ocular lens and it can be either binocular or monocular that means there could be two ips or there could be even one ips then the second number is a revolving nose pieces this nose pieces they contain the multiple objective lenses so why this is there are revolving nose nose pieces because these revolving nose pieces contains objective lens of different different magnification for example one nose piece might ha might have an objective lens of 10x another nose piece might have an objective lens of 20x and one might have an objective lens of 100x so depending upon how much magnification do we need we can revolve nose piece according to that so nose piece contains various objective lenses and these objective lenses can be used as per the requirement of the specimen which is kept on the stage and what magnification is required by the researcher to see that particular specimen the total magnification which we can achieve for a particular specimen is the multiplication of eyepiece and objective lens for example if you are using an eyepiece of 10x an objective lens of 10x so the magnified image which you will see is 10 is to 10 100x the image will be magnified up to 100x then you can see the fourth and fifth are the focus nodes which is for coarse adjustment and fine adjustment sixth number is the stage to hold the specimen you can see six number seven is the light source in some microscopes there is an artificial light source where you can switch on the bulb and then it will illuminate your specimen from down in certain microscopes you can use the natural light also that natural light you can keep in front of a natural light source near a window and it will illuminate your specimen 
condenser lens and diaphragm the major function of condenser lens is whatever source of light you are using that condenser lens will take up all the uh, light sources and will give a condensed form of light towards your specimen so that the image clarity is more the me mechanical stage it move the specimen on the horizontal axis for positioning the specimen so we are clear with all the parts of a basic microscope which is also known as a simple microscope a basic compound microscope now coming to the functions of the major parts of an optical microscope the lamp and condenser as just i discussed it project a parallel beam of light onto the sample for illumination sample stage with xy movement sample is placed on the stage and different parts of the sample can be viewed due to the xy movement capability this is very necessary because whenever any specimen is kept under the microscope we have to move the specimen left or right to see which part we have to put focus on so if you are putting a small slide on your stage it appears to be a small slide but when we magnify the image over that slide over that specimen then it gives us a viewer image a bigger image with the movement we can look towards the left right up down and the relevant part which we have to further magnify focusing nodes since the distance between the objective and eye piece is fixed fixed focusing is achieved by moving the sample relative to the objective lens in an in a compound microscope the eye piece where it is kept and the objective is kept the distance is fixed so for focusing the nose piece distance between the objective and the stage specimen can be focused using the coarse nobs or the fine nobs so that we can have the perfect view of our specimen different light sources can be used uh, in the microscopes depending upon what kind of specimen we are viewing and what kind of microscope we are using we can use different light sources which will illuminate our specimen we can see different type of bulb samples and depending upon what kind of what and what kind of illumination we require we use this light sources in certain cases uh, when the specimen is transparent then the light can be passed through it we can use the direct light source and when the specimen is opaque uh, the light source cannot pass through then we have to use the transmitted light mostly in case of compound microscope we have the opaque uh, the samples which can through which the light can pass through but in the case of stereo microscope we have where the samples are opaque objective as we have discussed it is the main part of magnification and it resolves the fine details on the samples from 10x to 100x ip is mostly is fixed it forms a further magnified virtual image which can be observed directly with eyes ip is has around 10 magnification beam splitter and camera it allow a permanent record of the real image from the objective to be made on film and it is the modern research microscopes so whenever any specimen which we are putting below the microscopes the image is directly shown on the camera so when the researcher who is viewing under the microscope he can set and put at a image which is best magnified and the persons who are there they can see live on the screen what is going under the microscope by attaching a camera and a screen with it by attaching a direct camera we can take the real images and which can be directly further used for research purposes or in the court of law where we can use and see the direct evidence 
that in the cases of supposedly any sexual harassment case and we have to prove that uh, with the vaginal swabs we have the semen samples along with it the best way is to see uh, prove under a microscope if we have any sperm activity inside that and if it can be captured on a camera then it can be directly used as a scientific evidence in the court of law to prove that there was some rape case involved so in the compound microscope as we have discussed this looks like a which we can say is an optical image what happens inside a microscope we have eye eye piece which forms a real image then further we have objective lens and the object and in the end we have the virtual image which is so much time magnified compared to the image which is formed by the eyepiece so the magnification depends upon the eyepiece and objective collectively what type of lenses we have used what magnification of lenses we have used in eyepiece and what what magnification of lenses we have used in objective we call it as a ray diagram of the compound microscope so as per the ray diagram the principle of the compound microscope is the passage of light through two lenses forms a virtual image of the object seen by the eye the compound microscope the magnification it multiply magnifying power of the object lenses into magnifying power of the eyepiece lens so 10x into 10x gives us 100x 10x into 100x gives us 1000x mechanical system is there which supports the microscope which we can say is the outer body in which every part is fixed the optical system which illuminates the object and passes light through a series of lenses so the mechanical system consists of base arm stage body tube base is the support arm is the c shaped upright structure stage on which the specimens are placed and body tube on which the objective and eyepiece lenses are mounted so basically whenever different uh, specimens which are found at the crime scene the compound microscope is majorly used for the analysis of those evidences which comes under the biological category any blood examination any semen examination any skin cell examination all microscopic substances which are present in saliva sweat etc they are examined under the compound microscope compound microscope is the simplest form of the microscope and is the best microscope to view all the substances and all the evidences and in the recent researches the cameras can also be attached with these microscopes which can give us a very fine image of the sample which is put at the stage and these images can be directly shown to the court of law as a scientific evidences and that can help us in solving the case thank you